Morning, Buck. How did you sleep? Buck was warm all night. And a morning <laughs> clicking. <laughs> and a scratch. Frozen. Cock stiff. <laughs> Anybody home? That's ridiculous. Good morning, morning of day two. Woke up, really frosty, really cold night. But man, is it ever a beautiful day. Jim pulled in a brook trout this morning, so we're off to a good start. Had a nice breakfast, and uh, it is just beautiful out here. So I'm really looking forward to getting on the water and uh, getting some more adventure behind us. In the boat, go on. the jealousy spilling over from Sean and Ted's canoes. One of the things that uh, really becomes clear to you when you start catching the kind of fish we caught last night. Ted caught a trophy brook trout and I caught a beauty too. And uh, it just becomes so clear after that that all the, the work you have to do to get here, to get to the good fishing, the harder it is to get to, the better the fishing's gonna be, it's, it's worth it. day done and uh, a couple of fish on the chart so pretty pumped about that. Oh the southern road. Yeah like you're talking about rivers that you know, get fished by like five birds a year. Might be able to run this one or this might be a total waste of time but I'm gonna go have a peek around the corner in this eddy here. Sometimes when you stand up, you get a, a good view of the rapids. You could just run the whole thing right. Yes! Look at that. Running the rapid first cast brook trout. This is my happy place, ladies and gentlemen. Does lard keep a long time? Yeah, for almost forever. That's a good lunch. Yeah. Mmm. Cheers. Cheers. Just uh, walking along a portage here on the Nipissing, we came across this cool old cabin. Just stopped to uh, have a look at it. How long do you think this has been here for? I think it was a ranger cabin, but looks like definitely there's some logging history involved. Tell me that's a dinner bell. 
Dead brook trout. <laughs> Is that a a, a a wind chime from the old logging days? Yeah, it must be a couple hundred years old. Yeah, at least the dovetails are like pretty perfect. I guess they just would have used chisels. Nineteen twenty-eight, Sean. The portage doesn't seem to be around much of a challenging stretch of river. So we're thinking we might uh, put our canoes in and paddle the rest. See how it goes. Stretch of river paddling today, and then we portage and camp at the end of a portage trail. Long paddle along the winding and twisting Nipissing River. Uh, followed by a portage that was completely overgrown with alder bushes. We had to veer way off the way. Uh, but, uh, you know, it started getting pretty cold, but we got a tarp rigged up and we got a fire going. I found some nice standing dead dry spruce trees. And so we, have, we actually got a nice camp uh, rigged up, a cozy camp rigged up. Just walking down this portage trail here on Allen Rapids and came up on a moose. So uh, that was super awesome. Uh, we're portaging along and right near the end of the trail, I'd seen some, um, a tuft of uh, fur up there. And I thought it was deer fur, maybe from a wolf kill, but it seemed a little too dark. And you know, there's not really any deer around here, so I suppose I should have known. And as soon as I came down here and I saw this moose that was uh, losing its fur, I knew that's what we'd seen back there. And uh, I think the, the sound of the river kind of covered up our our sound approaching it and uh, Sean managed to get right up to it before the moose looked up and immediately was spooked. Um, I think we kind of surprised it, I had no idea we were there which is pretty awesome. And then kind of drifted back and, and shelter a bit and uh, when it saw we weren't leaving it decided to head on its way but really cool experience just to see a moose like that uh, f on foot on the trail. Usually it's at a distance on the lake or something like that. Um, obviously we saw one from the canoe, but it's really different experience to see one on a portage trail. So that was pretty awesome. Are you going to run it? I'm pretty tempted are you? Yeah, I'm pretty tempted too. There's not many places I don't think you wouldn't be able to pull off if you saw some. Yeah. 
I think the worst that happens is we, we scrape over rocks. Yeah. Sounds yeah. fine to do. Oh, thought that would be fun too. I mean, you're gonna leave your gear here? No, let's. I guess let's take it. The rest of the way? Yeah, we might as well just carry it. Who knows, maybe we'll see another moose or two. We tied up Buck so he wouldn't bark at the moose. Whoa! Almost went down too. It was worth sacrificing it, canoe. Yeah, like even death maybe. <laughs> How was that guys? Yeah, that was terrible. Except we saw a moose. So that was kind of awesome. Rewarded by for the hard work, I guess. Kind of. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Shitty washed out uh, portage. A lot of downfalls, alders. And on top of that, it looks like the contour line crossed over a two kilometer stretch and it was really just a very gradual drop. So we're thinking we could have run it. But we got really, I don't know, flimsy boats. So running it with all our gear maybe wouldn't be the best idea anyway. And uh, so we're gonna go back and run it, take a few casts and maybe some eddies. After all, the worst that could happen is we all die. No. I feel like it's gonna be a really uh, fun paddle down there. I've decided to run this rapid. We gave it a little scout and we saw a long stretch of what looks like class twos. Very hard to scout from the river. So I'm a little nervous. I'm gonna be meeting up with Ted and Sean. They're gonna run the bottom part here of Allen's Rapids. But uh, wish me luck, cause I'm gonna need it. Through the first part, nicked one boulder. Gotta take it slow. Coming into the tough section now. Really rocky through here. Oh, yikes. Oh, another rock. Pretty 
shallow coming through here. Really hard to avoid any rocks. Probably gonna get hung up here. Not a lot of water in this section. Nothing I really could have done there. Well, maybe I'm through the thick of it there. Woo! Looks like I'm pretty much through all the white water now. I'm just going to catch this eddy. Yo! Uh, a little cramping in my foot there. Probably from dehydration. Got one. Yeah, baby. See, uh, having the skills, the canoeing skills, can be a really key part of catching speckled trout or brook trout and speckled trout are the same thing. So being a good canoeist and a good camper is uh, one of the key skills to get on brook trout. I mean, if I wasn't able to run this rapid, it would be very hard for me to get to these spots where you just saw me catch that fish there. Uh, I gotta catch up with Ted and Sean. Beauty fish. I met up with Ted and Sean, they carried and they put in just below the uh, the class two. Where's Buck? Did he follow you guys? Yeah. Buck, come on, Buck. In the boat, go on. In the boat. Good boy. Another log jam. Decided to go with the heavy in first. Smart. Nicely done. If we ever go to hell, we're, we're gonna have to be forced <laughs> to pull, pull over log jams for eternity. Ah, oh, this dog is so heavy. Buck, I don't think he's woken up. Buck, you fat bastard. And he's done it. Baseball. Still plenty of time to fall in.
there is a lot of really big and beautiful white pine trees along this river. One of the ways you can tell when a pine is a really old tree is uh, by the punky core. barbecue thing. Mmm. So good. I like to um, cook the heads because the cheeks are really good. And you just suck the meat off the cheeks because it's too small to actually cut out. Actually, in the fancy restaurants, they'll serve it with a head on too. So we're getting fancy. Fancy boy. And this is uh, your meal, Ted. How does that look? Looks damn good. That looks epic, doesn't it? Nice. All right. Surgeon's tape. It's good. All right. So it is morning of day four. A beautiful little campsite last night. Long portage to finish the day yesterday. But uh, Ted and Sean came up on a moose antler just in the bush, which was really cool. Um, and we found a gorgeous little site after passing a huge raging waterfall. And we took a little time to go check that out. Hi, Mom! And just had an epic uh, speckled trout dinner. But uh, today's gonna be a little different because we're gonna be paddling on some big lakes. So we're going through Burnt Root today. We got over four kilometers of carrying to do. To Yikes. Which, to be perfectly honest with you, I'm not too stoked about. About to put another day in the books. that does a lot of camping in Algonquin and, and he was on a lake when uh, there was a tornado and oh, yeah. killed a couple of campers. Oh yeah? Yeah. We have reached our first portage of the day. It's uh, 1930 meters. We are leaving the Nipissing behind. Um, who knows how many fish we got here, maybe 40. Now we start the back-breaking uh, challenge of a never-ending portage through the bush and the trail goes over a lot of contour lines so it looks like there's going to be some serious uphills too. Here's something uh, I wasn't really bargaining for. It's actually pretty deep. That was a good one. Here you go Buck, your duties are relieved. It's like the cool weather. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> well... We just got to the end of this almost two kilometer long carry. We just noticed that it is a very short paddle into another 
500 meter portage. So pretty much this is just a break. These are uh, winter green leaves and they're called that because they're green in the winter. You can dig through the snow and they look just like that. Waxy leaves a little bit and they taste just like winter green gum. Or I'm sorry, I should say winter green gum tastes like this because this is the original. We used to just call them tea leaves as a kid. Really tasty. You chew them up and you spit out, out the pulp. You can't really swallow them at all because they're just too pulpy, but they're really tasty. Um, so if you're in the bush and you want to um, plant a kiss on your girlfriend, chew on one of these first. There's a woodsman tip for you. Look out, ladies. What do you think, Buck? You should probably eat some tea leaves there. Your breath smells like a dead moose. So here we have, this plant's actually called Labrador tea it grows in significant abundance in Labrador, but a lot of places And that actually makes a really tasty tea and it just smells delicious, too So I think I might pick a few leaves Throw them in a nice warm tea tonight when we're broken exhausted and cold arriving at camp I know because I was asking that too Look at how green that lake is. This is Whiskey Jack Lake. This is where one of the highest elevations in the park. So this is all just spring fed and then everything drains out of these goes south. So there's very little set of, uh, vegetation in here. So really crystal clear, just, just beautiful. Especially after uh, over 2k stretch of portaging. Not a very graceful. Oh, good boy. Good boy. He's so cute. He's so good boy. Girl. The Malamute. Fishing Whiskey Jack Lake here. Whiskey Jack is, is another word for a gray jay, which is the national bird of Canada. Uh, but it's derived from um, Cree and Ojibwe folklore. And uh, the Whiskey Jack is the trickster. In Ojibwe culture, they're a little different in each culture, but in Ojibwe culture, usually it would play a trick on you. So it's more or less good, but it would play kind of sometimes a, not the nicest trick on you, but it would be in order to teach you something important about life. So, maybe the trickster's at work here on Whiskey Jack Lake in the Algonquin backcountry. But beautiful, glowing green lake, really awesome. I just about took the life out of me, Ted. Here at the end of day four. And uh, we caught fish earlier on in the day and like a bunch of idiots, we didn't keep them. Because you can have a great morning. We, it's gonna be like this all day. Then at dinner you get nothing but beat with a bag of coal. Uh, we trolled, um, we trolled Burnt Root 
and uh, we bumped into uh, Adrenaline Outdoors. Adrenaline oh, Adventures. Yeah. Uh, that's actually his real first name, is just Drenalin Outdoors. It's kind of awesome. I think his last name's uh, McSweeney or something. Um, anyway, so yeah, it seemed like I'd never met him before, but he's got a pretty good channel, apparently. I haven't seen it yet, I admit, but I'm looking forward to checking it out. And uh, just traded some stories and had a few laughs. Uh, and then they pulled out these fish that were just like gigantic, and then I just kind of stopped liking them from that point on. Um, because I was jealous, but uh, so we thought that we were gonna get into some big fish like that and we trolled the lake Very slowly the ice just got off a week ago. So the lake trout haven't come up um, So it'll probably be better in about a week right now They're still kind of deep like 15 feet and we didn't really have the right tackle to get that deep So it's, no, it's kind of a little early. We're here um, if we were here in about a week. It'd be better, but at least there's no bugs. Um, anyway, so yeah, we found a, a decent campsite, and uh, I guess the next steps are to, um, you know, get our fire going and just do our routine, get settled in, and I guess hopefully we can catch a fish. Bring the net! I got one! Loose. It's hooked yeah. on the stomach. Oh, that's why. Whoa! That's why. Still a pig though. Yeah! That's why the fight was so intense though. High five bro. From far. From far. I can't. Oh, nice. Thanks. Good netting job. Ah. That's a tank dude. Yeah! yeah. Holy f <laughs> Nice fish. Yeah! Look at that beauty. Nice. Unbelievable. I love their skin. We decided after getting to camp pretty late in the evening, you know, why not go up to the base of this rapid? We uh, went over to where the Petawawa empties into, uh, actually, what am I saying? I'm not telling anybody this. So we went to a place that I'm never telling you where it is. And anyway, so we, we went out, we went up to the base of a little rapid and honestly, right off the hop, Sean uh, hooks a big one and can't no, land it because it's too freaking big to boat yeah. and the net was in Ted's boat. So it gets off and he was, you know, nice. pretty upset, Shit. clearly. I probably would have cried, well, but Sean managed to, to hold back the tears. And um, then literally on what seemed like the next cast, he lands a beauty and an awesome fight, manages yeah, to boat it, no, um, sure it started to rain. Yeah. And uh, my snuggly pants were getting wet because I'd put on my, my snuggly pants. Don't do that before you go out fishing if you only have one pair of warm pants left, by the way. And um, anyways, so me and Ted cast and cast and just started feeling quite inferior to Sean since we hadn't caught in anything at all. And I was kind of about to, to call it quits and I, I cast my line out and sort of paddle across the current at the base of the rapid and bam, I hit one and uh, I knew it was a good size and Ted rushed over with the net and I had a long fight with it. Turned out not to be as big as I thought because it actually got hooked in the tail. So it must've gone to hit my, uh, my spoon. I was using a Williams Ridgeback, a small spoon, and it must've spun around and hooked itself. So it felt gigantic, but it was still a solid two pounds, probably more. So uh, two awesome fish. And we were kind of complaining that the fishing had been a little slow. So super exciting, amazing end to the day. Oh, I can't, man. That's good, that's good. Door tea, bitches. No, that's it. <laughs> right. So uh, that didn't 
didn't work out so well. What a lovely portage trail. Well, first of all, I tried to go up the right side, like facing up river and under the bridge, under the tree, because I thought it would be more fun. And uh, it was all working out. So my life jacket got stuck on a tree twig and I was stuck there, trying to pull forward. Just started just screaming obscenities. <laughs> and so that didn't work out so well. So then I made it up the other side. And then I got to the top and like almost <laughs> up my boat, yard sale. Would have walked probably all the way back to <laughs> red pine. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, uh, not, not a very uh, graceful chain of events for old Jim. He lost one. Ted, let me see that fish you just caught. It's a couple nice little brookies. Sweet. This one's a beauty. That's gonna be dinner. Nice. Uh, pretty strong current there. Yeah. <laughs> How do you catch the back of a raincoat? There's not even like a loop there. Uh, can you back that off a little? What's that? It's a little bit too far your way. I got it. You're filming. You can move that to the yeah. edge of the bench. Like right here? Yeah, I'll give me more than that. Yeah, look at here. You move yours a bit more, even. Yeah, I think that's about it. <sighs> Could really use the back of the axe for that. The axe is right there too if you need it. I think we picked the wrong uh, smoke direction. <laughs> at least it's kind of open at the back. One of the shitty things about setting up your tent in the rain is, is that before you get your fly on, all the rain is just dumping in your tent. Um, so, for example, it's quite the see that sucks. So I could unpeg it and try to dump it all out. I'm actually going to use my sweater to dry this up. So 
so I just had to use my sweater to dry out a massive puddle in our tent. That really sucks. <laughs> uh, setting up your tent in the rain is a pain in the butt. Ted, here, try some of this, bud. Come on. Mmm. That's good. Just watching a uh, cow and calf moose right now. So we're paddling hard against the uh, current of the Tim River. We can hear the mother calling. It's very hard to get a shot at them because they're in the dense alder bushes. So I'm trying to zoom in. Two calves. Ted says there's two calves, so I think he's right. making our way up the Tim River here and uh, it is challenging relatively warm weather we had this morning it's coming to an abrupt end and it's really cold and every time we stop we start shivering yo that's it just wanted to make sure I didn't go the wrong way another tributary and all of a sudden the river got way too small so I wanted to make sure I was not on the tributary but I didn't even see the fork we're just basically going beast mode here how this icy rain has just been hitting us headwind cold headwind and trying to paddle up the Tim River to get to Longbow Lake um, not particularly easy you guys because for a sec I looked at my GPS it's not very detailed and it shows a tributary and, it, and all of a sudden the river got way smaller at the same time so I just wanted to make sure we were on the we're still on the Tim as soon as it got cold the fishing dropped off and we're realizing it's really dependent on temperature it gets a little warm, they start biting. And then when it gets really cold, they seem to stop. We're there! I see the porton. It's beautiful. <laughs> we have battled the tin and the cold winds and rain in a fight for to fight the battle against hypothermatic conditions. Here we are. Finally, I'm freezing. Yes. Oh. End the day six and uh, Wow, what an epic day, but it turned into a real slog, cold, and we all started shivering because we're just beast paddling up the Tim River, and the current is pretty strong, and uh, every time we stop, we get cold, so, uh, but wow, after all that hard work, an incredible day to sort of uh, battle against the elements and battle against cold and make it to an awesome campsite. Definitely hard at the end of the day, but it made it a real adventure, and that's what I freaking live for. I think that's enough. Go. 
It is Tori's birthday today. Happy birthday, honey. And um, I'm missing most of her birthday, but I'm gonna come home and surprise her with a delicious trout dinner. And actually the rest of the guys also save some trout for their wives too. But how do we keep it nice and fresh? Well, uh, there's still some ice and snow in the bush in some places and got some chunks of it and put it in their boat. So we're gonna break it up and uh, just put it in our bags with our fish to keep it nice and fresh. So here we are paddling up the upper stretch of the Tim River. We got a ways to go and then we have to cross Tim Lake, but the trip is coming to an end. We probably are gonna be done in a couple hours. So it's been, a, it's been an awesome trip. The amount of moose we saw is great. Uh, there's been a lot of talks recently about moose populations going down. So to see healthy populations, it makes me feel really good that uh, there's definitely still a lot of hope for moose um, in areas where, uh, you know, that are unaccessible. Saw a lot of the beauty of the uh, interior back country here in Algonquin Park. It's just addictive, like when you get into these back country lakes and you get on some of these beautiful brook trout, you just gotta come back every spring. Yeah! Full circle.